Gas Network presents sports for the culture. I'm here with the family. Price XXV, double I. Rome. D Melo. Bro, flying. T Buggy, man. This is the greatest sports show on the planet. La Familia. Hope y'all ready for a ride. Can't wait to hear what you guys got to say. We are back. We are back. Your favorite sports show on the planet. Gas presents sports for the culture. I'm your host tonight at Bryce XXV double I. And as always, I got the dream team with me. Uh, let's start with the bottom right. Introduce yourself. Yes, sir. You know, it is man. Young Rome 22 on all socials. As always, man, we got another great show for y'all tonight. As I always say, come for the sport, stay for the culture. Never know what we're going to get into. Yeah, you ain't lying, bro. It could go, it could go many ways on this show. You truly never know. Uh, top right. Introduce yourself. Hey, T Boogie, man, wash your hands, wash your ass. Y'all know what it is, man. Gasly, hey, you coach. I'm just ready to have a good show, man. It's been a busy week. So let's uh, let's get it. I feel you on that, bro. I feel like this week never gonna end. Is it is it is it Wednesday yet? Is it hump day yet? Nah, not even. Uh bottom left, introduce yourself. What up, man? It's uh Nick DMV real estate, as but the real ones know me as uh, Scruff Line. You feel me? Uh, come to me for all your sports takes, uh, you know, and uh, real estate needs. I like that, man. My man threw a, a shameless plug, but I ain't mad at it one bit, <laughs> man. Get that, get that, get that, get that out there, man. I might, uh, I might have to holler at you soon, my guy. Sure. Uh, so let's jump into it, man. Uh, first, before we really get into our main topics of the day, I got to ask: Did you see the eclipse, fellas? Did you see the solar eclipse, man? Yes or no? No. Okay. You know, I glanced yeah. at it. You feel me? Yeah, I took a couple, a uh, couple looks at it. Um, it was dope. All right. Second question: Were you using the appropriate eyewear when you took a glance at the solar eclipse? <laughs> nah, you know, I I wasn't prepared. You know what I'm saying? I didn't. He wasn't talking about this joint in advance. So for me, I didn't know. It's just it snuck up on me. I didn't know until the day of. You know. I, I took some uh, glasses that I, I had left over from my last dentist appointment and uh, I said, this is good enough. <laughs> good enough for a quick peek. <laughs> dentist appointment? What the hell they got to do with glasses? You know, when you're under the chair, they put the light on you and all that, you know. Oh, no, them joints seem like that would be the wrong, that would be the wrong. <laughs> it could have been, it could have been, <laughs> but, you know, I, I, it's all good. I, like I said, I took a peek. I wasn't. I wasn't gonna stare with the wrong or right glass. You wasn't getting me. Yeah, I saw some. Uh, I saw some hilarious uh, memes and, and tweets from uh, <laughs> from the eclipse. It was one person that tweeted out like, "Yeah, glass at the eclipse with no glasses today." And somebody replied, "Better start learning piano, brother." <laughs> I was like, "Yo, that's insane!" <laughs> insane, man. The internet's undefeated. Uh, but yeah, nah, definitely a, a cool moment. I think the next one's not till 2044. So if you missed out, man, eat your vegetables and drink your water because you uh you got you gotta you gotta last for some years to see another one. Uh but let's let's jump into it, uh guys. Obviously, last night was the men's national championship. Um, and you know, the favorite did come away the victor. So let's just do a quick game recap before I get into some of these particulars I want to talk to y'all boys about. Uh, what y'all think about UConn? Were you, got, were you all impressed? And do you feel like this UConn team is one of the greatest teams of all time, especially considering that they won it last year as well? Uh, T, I'm going to start with you. I mean, you got to put them up there with all time. I mean, when you talk back, back to back, it's only been, what, six or seven teams that's been back to back uh, in the NCAA. Um, did they have any all-time players? We'll see what they do at the pro level, but uh, I mean, all them guys went out there and bowled. You can't do what I expected. I and this honestly looked like one of their easier games. So, I mean, all in all, I didn't think it was that eventful, but still, two good teams. Big Lurch, Edie, and Klingon was a good matchup, and uh, you know, <laughs> the first half was fun. Yeah, yeah, first half was. First half, I thought was how the game was going to continue to go, man. It's crazy that UConn almost, like, lulls their opponent to sleep a little bit before their runs come. You know what I mean? Like, uh, Purdue looked like, uh, you know, a, a valid opponent in the first half. Uh, but, you know, proved not to be. Um, Struff, what do you think about the game? 
Um, you know, honestly, the game went as expected. It's rare. I say rare in college basketball, but like even though there's upsets in the first two rounds, like ultimately I feel like the best teams actually have won for the most part. Like, you know, there were some matchup situations, but like UConn was the better team than Purdue. So I, I fully expected them to win. I wouldn't have been surprised if Purdue had won, but UConn uh, deep team, uh, well coached team. Um, but because of the fact that they just won it last year, I automatically in my head thought, yeah, chances of them going back to back are pretty slim because you know what I'm saying? Like that's only happened a number of times. Uh, last time it happened was, you know, Joe Keem Noah and, uh, you know, Al Horford and them boys, Corey yeah. Brewer, Florida, you know what I mean? That was a pretty good team, you know what I'm saying? And so you're right up there with those with those teams. And then, you know, it got me thinking about UConn. The coach went up there on the podium, shout out Jersey City, and uh, he said, uh, yeah, UConn, we, we've been running this college basketball thing for the last 20, 30 years, he said, 10, 20, 30 years. And the first one, I, when he first said it, he said 10 at first, I think. I'm like, man, eh. he said 20, 30 years. And I was like, yeah, yeah, they have been running for like 20, 30 years. So I'm about, I'm about 33 years old. I just remember when uh, Mecca Okafor and them boys was winning them chips, man. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the best college basketball teams of all time, them UConn teams. And then like Rip Hamilton and them boys. You know, it's been a long time running with UConn basketball, bro. So, like, shout out to the respect of the program. That's that's a that's a top notch pedigree. So, like, you know, they know how to do it. With all due respect, Purdue don't know how to do it. They never done it before. This is the most accomplished run they've ever had in tournament history. So, you know, things went according to you know you are who you are. You know what they say. You know, what I'm saying you, no matter where you go, you know, say you are what you are. Like, like what is it? Purdue, Purdue style chicken. That's what they are. That's you yeah, know, you can Huskies eat chickens. Yeah, you can't, you can't definitely a blue blood, man. That's why they call them that. Um, they are one of the elite college basketball teams that's been so for years now. Uh, I'm with you when he first said that on the podium. I was like, bro, wild. And I thought about it too. I'm like, nah, he's about right. Um, and you know, you can't, you can't, they, they're. They remind me a lot of this of the team that won the championship. Their, you know, claim to fame over the last 30 years, right? They lure you to sleep, and then all of a sudden they got a champion. It's not like every single season UConn is a threat to win it all. You know what I'm saying? Like they have their down years, and then all of a sudden they just pop up and win a chip. It's like that. So that this championship team was like the epitome of that. Um, I do wonder though, like the way this championship happened. Like you mentioned uh Joaquin Noah in Florida. That was basically the same team, right? What is that? Humphreys at the point guard, uh, Corey Brewer with, with Horford, and and it's one more outside of know it's one more guy that was on that team that was a big impact player. Um, but you know, that team was basically the same team two years in a row. I think one of the more impressive parts about this UConn team is this team looked a lot different than last year. I mean, it's some still some some similar players, but Spencer played a huge role in that game last night. He wasn't there last year, right? I guess he was at he was at RU last year. Um, and then what's my guy that transferred from East Carolina? I think he was there last year, but didn't play this large of a role. Um, and this year, he first team All American, uh, Newton. So impressive that they that they're with the times, bro. Because you see Kentucky trying to do the same thing they've been doing, getting these one and dones. But that that time has passed. The new time is to be in that transfer pro, uh, protocol and really nabbing some of these players as they are, are have have already matured. And uh, Hurley is on top of the of the trend, bro. Like like no other. Um, yeah. So that, that that's that's pretty cool to see, man. Whoever catches the trend first is usually the the, the victor. Uh, Ron, what do you think about the game, man? And do you think that UConn has got to be considered one of the one of the greatest teams of all time? Yeah, man, I think no doubt they got to be considered uh, one of the greatest of all time. Uh, just just off going back to back. And like you said, the team not being the exact same and then going back to back. So that says a lot about the program, kind of discuss overall point. Um, but I, I was thoroughly impressed, not only just because they, they, they won back to back, but in the fashion that they won, it was kind of like a statement. It was kind of like a, like a we, we, it was almost like they were playing 
to to say that we are one of the greatest teams of all time, not just the greatest of the season. Um, so I was thoroughly impressed with the game and, and what UConn has done over the last two years and really the last couple decades is, as it's been put. No, nah, facts, bro. Facts. Hard to argue with it. It, it didn't sound right when he said it. Well, it's hard well, to, to argue. To, you know? to your point, because it's not a it's not an every year thing, but that's how you know you really have a good program, uh, like Scruff was saying, because even if you have a couple years off, like you're right back with it because you have a, a legitimate program. Not nah, facts. And and also it's interesting that Hurley said, yeah, we run college basketball. And it's like, really, they run both sides of the gamut, men's and women's. We're gonna get in the women, the women's tournament uh in a little bit, but uh facts. Yeah, man, they 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 that squad, they that squad. Um so we'll we'll see if they can if they can go on a three peat. I feel like a three peat crazy. T you think they got a shot to three peat it next year? No. <laughs> nah. No. Oh, everybody out on the three P. So all right. I don't I don't think anybody would had them repeating except maybe G. He <laughs> he did, he did actually. Um, if if yeah. Hurley stays though, you know, they talking about Hurley might go to Kentucky, but if he stays, they, I think they got a wow. shot. Wow, that would be really wild if he did that. Uh, you can't you can't do you no no you can't you can't go on that podium and say you kind of best basketball team in the last 30 years and then go take a job in Kentucky. That's the 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 slimiest. Wow. No, it's not oh, slimy, wow. bro. It's business. Bro, that's not nah. Because then you don't even only, mean it, bro. You don't even mean cool it. If, it's only cool if Coach Prime do it. Right, bro. 15 M's a year? Are you crazy? Bro, you I know go. you didn't just compare Jackson State and Colorado to he did and Kentucky, bro. Those those are comparable. Like, you know what I'm saying? Those are comparable programs for real. But the paper, but the paper's not comparable. All right, bro. Well, we money talks, all right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there we go. Let's put, that, let's put that in perspective, bro. 15 M's a year, highest paid college coach of all time. I'm out of there if I'm Hurley. I'm out of there. Yeah, that joint crazy, that whole Kentucky situation. I'm surprised they did what they did, but I respect it. I don't know who they're going to who they gonna bring in because they're going to – you're going to get rid of Calipari. You better bring somebody. Arkansas like, you know coach. Saying? No, Alabama's who? coach. Alabama's coach. Yeah, they talk about Nate Oates. They also talk about Billy leaving. Donovan. Billy Donovan's on the short list. Um, there's a couple. There's a couple candidates out there on the short list for Kentucky, and they throwing that. They throwing that bread at whoever, bro. So when you got those those Kentucky boosters, man, you you gonna get who you want. <laughs> and I think it's gonna end up being Hurley. Uh, we'll see though. Um, but when there is a winner, there always must be a loser, bro. Whenever there's a winner, there must be a loser, and. Uh, mm. I don't know, man. I feel like Purdue, you know, Scruff said it earlier, they they were Purdue chicken, but I don't know, bro. I, I, I thought Purdue was a, uh, had a hell of a run. Um, they've been, they've been in the upper echelon of college basketball teams, right? And when you talk about a 65 team tournament, bro, it's hard to win that, dog. I don't care who you are. I, I know UConn's just one back to back. So it makes it seem like it's easier than it is, but that's, that shit is tough, bro. Um, and I said in the group chat, man, I felt like Zach Eady is a top 10 college basketball player in my lifetime, bro. I, don't, I, I can't name nine guys with a more decorated college basketball career or Get more dominant. Get out of here, bro. More Come on, bro. It's Zach Eady. We're going to get Yo, into it. We're going to get into it because. This is the biggest prisoner of the moment take I've ever heard in my life. Bro, how though? Top 10, how is it? Bro? How? How? Top ten, top ten, bro. Easy, easy. I might, be, I might be selling them short. I, I might. Can, be I can, I can name, I can name ten easy, but like, I, nah. I can, see, you, the only, the only thing you're gonna do is the same thing y'all was doing in the group chat. Y'all gonna name guys that you felt like was better NBA prospects, and that's that's the ah. difference, yo. Because like, if I say the top ten best college, greatest college basketball players of all time in my lifetime, I'm not. So I'm not going back to the eight. I'm, I'm born in ninety one. I'm not going back to the 80s, the 70s, and the 60s. I'm not doing that, bro. So I don't have a file on those guys in college. But when, talk, when I talk about guys that I saw, you listed a Mecca Okafor. Bro, man, ED career, better than the Okafors, right? I mean, you talk about Joe King Noah. When I think what? about Noah, back to back champion, I got to think about that one a little different. He was a dominant player. But if you look at the numbers, right. ED shitting on him, bro. ED won back to back Naismiths, dog. Like that is the company he's in is unreal when you when he did that. Like it's crazy. 
dominates every game. Went out on his went out on his shield last game with what thirty was it thirty five or ten supporting he just, cast. He went crazy. He went crazy. If the supporting cast just hit a couple threes, we might be talking about a Purdue championship right now. Uh, but people don't like Edie because for a lot of folks, especially these guys who live and die by the NBA and the NBA draft, a la Scruff, he doesn't pass the eye test for these guys. He doesn't pass the eye test, right? But guess what? In college basketball, he's proven, solidified, top 10 of my lifetime. And what do, what y'all think about that take? Uh, Ron, what you think? Man? Uh, Bryce, I think I, I think I got to agree with you on that, man. Like, Edie's definitely – if you're if you're talking about just college and we're not projecting what, what, how we feel he might do at the next level, then, then yeah, I think he's earned that. And I think if he would have gotten – captured the chip over, over UConn, uh, I think that would have boosted his status even more and and made your take seem seem a little a little more more reasonable. But I, I think I gotta agree with you though. But he did nah, not. Nah, facts. Like you can't you can't tell me that Caitlin Clark is uh the best women's uh college belt ball player of all time, and Zach Eady's not on the you know up there on the men's side. It don't it doesn't make sense. Uh, T, what you think about this one? Top five, I mean top ten. He, he's arguably top five just off of accolades alone. Um, what what round did um he get put out the year before last? I, I mean, think last was the third with his first round. Team. First round. It was first, first round exit. First round. Exit. Yeah. What, yeah. First what round. Seed, what seed was he? Number first seed. He was the first seed. Yeah. So that Remember, they lost to a sixteen seed. That that go on his resume too, yeah. right? Yeah, he, he got history on his side. First on one way. to ever. Ever lost <laughs> six. Wait, did he lose to that? Did he lose to that random Christian school that went on a crazy run though? Yeah. Who did he lose to? Did he lose to Mother Jean or whatever her name was? I think it was <laughs> Fairly Dickinson. Catherine. I believe it was Fairly Dickinson. I, I, I think it was Fairly Dickinson. Oh, okay. I mean, but either way, you you lost a 16 seed. So like, I mean, Edie's been great. Uh, and this season, yep. is, this season's Dickinson. been truly dominant. But. Um, I'll give him top ten. I'll give him. I'll give him top ten, maybe top five, but he's not top one, two, or three. And then I do think, and I know you're saying, all right, greatest college player. A, a lot of that neat, neat, like you got to be. We got to believe you can do it at the next level for us to love you. All right, Christian Leitner. People believed he could do it at the next level. He didn't get it done, but people believed he could get it done at the next level. Uh, some of these other guys. Um, Except my man Psycho T, you know my man Psycho T, Tyler Haynes, bro. They, we he we we couldn't, we couldn't do it. We knew he couldn't. Do it. That that's a great comparison. These two. So if if Hank if if Hansborough is in your top one two three, then Edie's in your top one two three as well. Um, I don't want to take nothing away from the big fella, but he's had a hell of a college career. I, as a matter of fact, I seen a stat that said uh, a lot of people were saying it's just because he's tall. I don't know if y'all saw that floating around on Twitter. And they showed every other person that was like seven, one, seven, two, and above. It was like two points, three, three rebounds, mm -hmm. four points, two rebounds, one point, one rebound. And then Edie's like 20 something and 12, like dominant numbers, big time dominant numbers, man. Uh, so, yeah, respect that guy, Bryce. That's a spot on take. And, like, you know, to piggyback off that a bit, when you look at Edie's team, bro, can y'all name one guy that's got a chance at the league? Of course you can't. You can't, bro. Because nobody on that team is going to the league except Edie, bro. Like, so he's doing this with a team of players who are not and, – and, and okay. And then what somebody could say to that argument that I'm trying to make is like, all right, fine. He don't got nobody to go that's going to the league. But you just told me you don't have – you can be a great player um, in college and not necessarily be league bound. So to that I would say name one player on Edie's team that's a great college player. You can't do it, bro. Like, so it's just Edie and a whole bunch of guys that couldn't hit threes when the lights were the brightest. All right. And that that to me is like shows every tells me everything I gotta know, bro. Like, even Melo had uh Hakeem Warwick with him. And I and I think Melo is above Edie on that top 10 list, but even he had Hakeem Warwick, you feel me? And if we I mean to, to your uh, point though, Bryce, it like how great of a college player are you? If you're if you if you're not projected to be that great in the ne at the next level either though, like if you're one of the greatest college players of all time, you can't like you should be something when you get to the league. Like what what are your expectations for Ed when he get to the league? I, and I, that's a good point. But first, I, I got to say that these are two totally different basketball games, right? These are two to the league, the college game and the NBA game are not the same game. 
Yeah, but yeah, but case in point, if Edie was born in the eighty, if Edie was born in the seventies and played in the eighties, or born in the you know played in the nineties, bro would be a top three pick, no question. They would be put man, they be putting that man. He'd be a first pick, no question, bro. But he's born in an era where the big man don't matter no more. Ain't no post. Ain't no post game in the NBA. So it's a totally different game. So you comparing two. It's like it's almost like comparing. Um, I don't want to say like it's almost like comparing the WNBA to the NBA. Like it's almost like when people be like, yeah, Caitlin Clark couldn't play in the NBA though. Like it's like, bro, it's a totally different game, bro. I got you. It's not that. It's not that big of a difference. I'm being dramatic there. But it's a different ball game, bro. Totally I got, different. I got two points to that. When you talk about your top 10 list, the greatest college players you saw in your career, Edie makes that list solely because he couldn't get to the next level. A lot of those guys that are on that list or didn't or won't make that list is because they were good enough to go to the next level. Mike Beasley, next level. KD, next level. Those guys didn't get to stay. You give them four or five years, you know what type of numbers we see out of Beasley and, and, and KD and Melo if they stay for three, four years. Uh, and then another thing is, when Steph Curry was at Davidson, we didn't see anybody in the NBA running around shooting a thousand threes. He he transformed the next level. So if Edie was really really that dominant, he we would it would be a return of the big man, return of the Mac, baby. Yeah, that's 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 kind of what I was be. thinking. There might be, all right. Let's wait and see. I ain't, I ain't putting it past Big Edie, bro. What do you think? What do you, what do you think Edie could do uh, against um, Wimby? See, and this this is case you how the game is totally different. Make a roster. Look, this is how you know the game is totally different because Wimby in college basketball might have gave you a uh, thirteen and seven. No, thirteen no and seven on UConn. Thirteen and seven on UConn. No, no way. No. All right, Wimby He'll in, be in college the basketball. Thing right. times two. Wimby would average twenty and twenty. <laughs> I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it, bro. The, the certain big, players fit certain players fit the NBA game a lot better than they fit the college game, bro. Certain players fit the college game a lot better than they fit the NBA game. It's not apples to apples. We talk about those two games, bro. Okay, how about this, bro? How about this? What did Donovan Mitchell do in college? Because first year into the league, that man was dropping crazy buckets. Uh his college numbers are solid, but it's not. It's not 20, 27 a game. It's he not got, that. But his but his rookie year in the league, he dropping crazy buckets, bro. Because we some only, players' game just more translatable that, to the NBA. That's only true for the guards. The bigs are fair. Oh, come on, man. All right. It's the same reason I told people don't draft Brendan Hayward. Like, no, nah, it's, 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 it does apply Brendan to Brendan Hayward though. wasn't that good in college, bro. No, nah, it does apply to bigs, though. Because, like, look at Marvin Bagley. He wasn't no damn ED in college. Marvin Bagley was that dude in college, bro, but he just a guy in the NBA. Facts. Marvin Bagley was that guy. Hold on, hold on. Let's go with what T was bringing up. No, Michael we're talking Beasley about was it. that guy in college. We're talking about it the opposite way, where a guy can average 13 and 7 and be phenomenal. Because Donovan Mitchell wasn't Don, – he wasn't spider in college. So we're talking about it the opposite way. Bigs typically don't take flight when they get to the league. Maybe I'm tripping, but if you couldn't do it in college, you're probably not going to do it in the pro if you're a big fella. There's guys that did it in college as big as big men that could not do it in the pros, though. And that's right. That, sure. That's right. Because the, the game, it's a higher level game in the NBA. But from college to the NBA, we've seen guards transcend because it's a guard game at the next level. We don't see the bigs do that, man. Facts. And that and – that, goes to the point that it's a totally different game in the NBA, bro. It's not the same basketball game. So you can't expect a big – you can't really expect a Zach Eady to go into the NBA and be dominant because they're not giving you 25 post touches a game, bro. That's not happening in the league no more, bro. If it was, Zach Eady going to get you 22 a game, dog. Give him 25 post touches, he's going to get you 22 a game. Nah, he would. He would. And he I think the most impressive thing about Zach Eady at this point, like the most thing I was most impressed about throughout the tournament, is the man's conditioning, bro. Especially when he went against NC State, if Big Boy got to come out the game every three minutes and get, get a huff and a puff, while Eady just running up and down the court. And another thing about Eady, why I think 
to Rome with to Rome's question, well, I think he may translate to the NBA better than people expect. His conditioning is on point and he's a lot faster. His straight line speed is up there with everybody. I can't wait to the NBA combine. Straight Zach, line? Yes. Zach Eady's straight line speed is up, bro. Yes, it is, dog. Zach okay. Eady, Zach he Eady can, probably running a uh a four seven forty. He could probably he, he can run the floor, but like my problem is you gotta play defense in space. That's the problem. His pick lateral. and roll, dribble handoff. You gotta defend zoom action, pin downs. Like, uh, all right, maybe he work out, maybe he don't. He's worth he's worth a draft pick. I'll say that. It's a different game. It's a different game when you got a defensive three seconds, right? In college, this this is why it's, this there are many factors that make it a different game, bro. But defensive three seconds is one of them. In college, you can put Zach Eady in the paint and not have to worry about shit, bro. He don't gotta. He don't gotta get out the paint on defense, bro. You can't do that in the league, bro. It's a. It's a totally different game, bro. It's like, yeah. it's not. It's not the same thing, man. And uh, to Zach, to Zach Eady's detriment, for at least for as his career goes. Scrub, you you seem to be the one that was the biggest. Uh, I you know I'm tripping with my take, so I want to hear what you what your thoughts are on Eady. Yeah, I, I think he'll be selected in the same round as Bronny James, and that's just the way things work out, bro. Uh, unfortunately, you know what I mean. I've seen this seen this show before, bro. So like, you know, what I'm saying he's gonna be a second round pick, um, maybe twenty, maybe you know. I don't I don't see him being anything more than I think he'll he he'll make a roster. You know, uh, I think today's game is you know he has what like. Three guys in the NBA that he might match up well against, you know what I'm saying? Like, because other other than that, people don't really play centers like that, which means he's only be paying like ten minutes a game max. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna be backup center. Uh, I don't see him being a game changer. You know what I'm saying? Like where people are gonna have to, you know, adjust for him. You know, so oh yeah, backup center, bro. That's 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 what I see for him, bro. And I don't see a team wanting to invest more than a. Not a top 20 pick. I'll say that. I'm telling but you right most now, Big, e, Big Edie going lottery. Big Edie going lottery, bro. Mark my words. And uh, the T made a good point earlier, right? He was like, Steph Curry came in and changed the game, bro. But first five years, Steph Curry didn't really do shit, all right? First five years in the league, mind you, Steph 30, Steph 37 probably, something like that. First five years in the league, Steph Curry ain't do shit, bro. And you know what it took? It took a coach to be like, yeah, bro, you play your game. I ain't, I ain't worried about nothing else. You you play how you're supposed to. You play how your style, bro. You play your style, and we're going to work around your style. And that's when Steph really took off, bro. It takes, a, it takes a coach that can see what Edie has and and how he can change the game, right? Maybe you're right, limited minutes. Maybe he's not a you know 30-minute-per-game guy in the league, but – I for sure think ED is going to have an impact in the NBA, and uh, it's going to be return of the big man. It's going to be returned, <laughs> not not completely, but ED ED going to make him. ED going ED going to shock some folks when he gets to the league, man. Number one thing for ED though, he got to get a jumper, bro. He got to get a jumper, dog. If he don't get no jumper, he right. cook. He went. Yeah, he got to get a jumper. How many he finished with? How many points he finished with? He don't have one. 30, 34 or something like that. Thirty-four and twenty-five shots. We gonna get that to a guard. Cause I'm gonna get five, four to five threes out of that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, and, that, and that's 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 the analytic side of it, bro. You, you give know, you give either. you give 25 shots to Malachi Flynn. Look what look what happens. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> nah, but uh, I, I'm excited to see what Edie does at the next level, man. It's gonna be interesting. I'm definitely gonna be watching close. I can't wait for summer league. He's gonna be a summer league star. <laughs> Yeah, he'll be he'll be he'll be good in the summer league because summer league is just like low key summer league is like halfway between an NBA and college mm -hmm. basketball because it's like people that are low key aren't quite good enough for the league and some of them obviously are but you know it's like you know the the the, the fact of the matter though is Ed is not a taco fall bro like you know what I'm saying like he's not Cube a should've, Cube should've he's better Cube. than taco fall, fall in college he's not Simbular. All right. <laughs> I was a gross guy back in the day. <laughs> yeah, Cuz was nice, though. <laughs> man, he's going to be in the big three, man. <laughs> he's going to be on the team with Caitlin Clark in the big three. 
<laughs> he probably play like yeah, they probably play together. <laughs> All right. Well, that's enough on, on Zach Eady, man. We'll be following his career. We'll be following his career for sure. So we'll, we'll, we'll see Zach Eady conversation. <laughs> <laughs> <Y'all brought up laughs> we, we gotta we gotta talk about Caitlin Clark, man. Um, in the women's the women's game, the women's championship game. So let's do a quick recap of that. South Carolina versus Iowa. Hey man, hell of a hell of a first half. Game eerily similar to the men's game, where it just seemed like South Carolina more or less lowered them to sleep and then, you know, ran away with it a little bit. Uh, what were you guys' reactions to the South Carolina-Iowa game? Before we get into some of the uh, specifics with Caitlin Clark, uh, what do you guys think? And, uh, yeah, yeah what, give me a quick recap. Um, Scrub was here. Well, you know, I think it was very similar, actually, because South Carolina was the better team. Um, and Caitlin Clark – you know, is a, she is in the same category and type of player as like, uh, you know, Luca or like a James Harden in the sense that like they can put up a lot of big buckets, score a lot of stuff, it can make it look good. And I'm like, I'm talking like Harden in this prime, you know what I mean? Not like this version of him. Like, but you know. But does it win? Like, you know what I mean? Like, South Carolina got, like, some real dogs. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, like, they had, like, a whole platoon of really good basketball players that played within the system and, you know, real culture. You know what I mean? Um, So, yeah, like, I mean, South Carolina was a better basketball team. But, like, Caitlin Clark was a bigger star. You know what I mean? And, you know, I think maybe that might have been her downfall in this sense because I'm sure it was motivational in the sense like we didn't really know like some people knew like the best player on South Carolina but most of these girls weren't starters they turned over five starters from last season and now uh this the whole new starting five and they win the chip like crazy impressive um so yeah like uh, South Carolina was a better team great program they're running stuff it's just amazing to me that uh, Caitlin Clark was, you know, she stole all the headlines all year, and this team was undefeated the whole year, and no one even knew until yesterday. <laughs> nah, that's a good point. You had to be tapped in to, to to know some players on that team. I know us, we we a little different breed, right? We we're actually most of us are actually tuning into the women's game throughout the season. Maybe we're not watching every single game, but we're watching a handful enough to know who Malaysia Full Wiley is, right? Who Big Cardozo is. Like, we know who these folks are. Um, but to Scruff's point, the casuals got no clue, right? And we talked about it last week that, you know, there's a lot of folks coming to the game, coming to watch the game because of Caitlin Clark, and hopefully they stay after they see these these other athletes that, that put on a show with South Carolina. Uh, T, uh, piggyback off Scruff, man. What you, do you think about the game? Uh, what do you think about the result? Hey, man, um... I tweeted this, and um, I was in a bar, so I seen it. I seen it live in person. Uh, that, that game was a race war, man. <laughs> like <laughs> it, it, it divided. It divided the country the same way uh, Trump divided the country. If you're being honest, uh, everybody was rooting for South Carolina where I was at, and them people ain't even know basketball, bro. They just knew, you know, when the shot went in and when the shot didn't go in. But um, <laughs> you need that type of polar. Polar, polar, I can't even get it out. But you need that polarization, type of uh, sports content, uh, sentiment, emotion to get eyes on a product. You need people to be passionate, and and you need fans that don't know the game. You need casuals. Casuals are the largest percentage of the fan base in sports. So um, it was a great game for the casual fan. Uh, Caitlin Clark, supernova, big star. South Carolina, dogs, 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 dogs. Come off the bench with dogs. It really came down to, man, one person can't beat a team. Um, same, Like you said, same thing happened with Zach Eady. Same thing happened with Caitlin Clark. Same thing happened to King Leonidas, all right? Y'all, y'all, y'all go hard. You know what I'm saying? Y'all go to war. Y'all tough. But you and your little 300, you know what I'm saying? Y'all, you had them in the first half. <laughs> you know, but... You wasn't going to be big Xerxes up there, man. Them, them Persians, you wasn't going to do it too many. And that's what it came down to, man. One person can't be the team. You tell that to, you tell that to the kids in the youth level, one person can't be the team. 
You've seen it come true in both championship games. Both offenses ran through one person, and they ran into teams. We got a few people that could beat you on any given night. Yeah, man. T, you taking you taking the the buzzword right right away from me, man. I, that's what I was gonna use was was South Carolina is a team, like in every sense of it. Uh, that was some real team basketball uh, from top to bottom, man. Like it, you, there's there's some stars you could point to, sure, but like when you watch them play, it doesn't feel like anybody's bigger than anybody else in any sense of the, in any sense of the word. Um, so I, I that, that was my big takeaway from South Carolina was that they were impressive. As, as an overall sports fan, watching a lot of different team sports, that was one of the best units across sports that I've seen, like like on, on some real team unity stuff. Um, but as far as Caitlin Clark, man, like I think she's as advertised. Like she was incredibly impressive. Um, yeah, one, one person's not going to be the team, but if you have a player like Caitlin Clark, you, you feel like you have a shot to do that, right? You feel like you're one or two other players away uh, from being able to beat whoever, whenever. Um, so I think Caitlin Clark is definitely as advertised. And to T's point, she's a very polarizing player, and that's exactly what the women's game needs. Because if you if you were tuning in for Caitlin Clark and you do enjoy basketball, and that was your first time viewing the South Carolina team, you saw a very impressive basketball team, and I'm sure that that that's the kind of thing that's going to keep people watching the game. Uh, so you need your your Caitlin Clarks and, and those type of players to bring in as many viewers as possible. That's a fact. That's a fact. And the question is, what happens to those viewers? You know what I'm saying? Um, they already starting to promote Caitlin Clark's first game in the WNBA. So hopefully some of these viewers follow her to the, I think it's an Indiana Fever that got the first pick, if I'm not mistaken. Hopefully some of these viewers follow her to the Fever and uh, get, some, get some spotlight on the WNBA game. It was a good question that came from the group chat. I believe Scruff asked it. Uh, apologies if, I get, if I'm getting that wrong, but Scruff asked earlier: um, Is it fair, right, that even that even after the loss, the bigger story is Caitlin Clark? You know what I'm saying? And you know, I, I do want to pose that question to you guys. Uh, do you guys think that's an unfair thing that like South Carolina just goes undefeated, right? That's historic. You know what I'm saying? Make a run all the way through and win the chip. And then Caitlin Clark's a news story. What, what I you think, think? I think that's sports. I think uh, the Lakers are trash, and we talk about them all the time because they have LeBron James. I think uh, when the Yankees do bad, whatever star player they have, they still get a ton of publicity. Um, in the NFL, Aaron Rodgers played four plays. He got talked about all season. Uh, when when you're the star player, you you get the attention. It's, it's, it's what we were just saying about the polarization when you're the star player um you're you're gonna your storyline will supersede some of the more important actual aspects of the sport at time but that's just part of of sports and sports media no that's a fact bro like when uh when biden won the election all they was talking about was trump the day after you know what i'm saying like he's a bigger star whoever the bigger star is gets talked about a little bit more and uh i, I couldn't i couldn't agree more with that but does that make it right, though? You know what I'm saying? Is it is it, is it unfair? T, what you think? I, I don't think it's an issue of uh, fair. I think it's um, more of an issue of that's just how things are. Um, and, and it works for business. Great great teams win games, right? Great players sell tickets. Uh, the Pistons were a great team. No one cares about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, we want to see the players. People come to see a player. The person that comes to see the teams are, like, alumni. Everybody else is there to see Caitlin Clark. Uh, my father watches women's basketball heavy. He goes to some Maryland games. He absolutely went to the game against Iowa. You know what I'm saying? Like, stars bring out fans. So that's just how it's going to be. And um, them ladies, they deserve all the shine, all the praise, all the love, all the respect. But at, at the end of the day, man, look, Caitlin Clark is just a bigger draw. It's just, just the way it is. Nah, that's a fact, bro. Hard, hard to argue with that, man. Hard to argue with that at all. Uh, Scrub, you, I think you, you, you the one that posed the question. So, does anybody think it's not, it's not fair, man? What you, what you think, bro? Well, I mean, it, it, it's, 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 it's not fair, obviously. But I mean, it is what it is. Like, you know, that's the way things are. You know what I'm saying? But the fact that they won, you know, it was a nice message there, right? You know, like Coach Boogie, you know, appreciate the nice message there. That the team won, you know what I'm saying? I mean, the stars fill up the seats. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
The draw, people there for Caitlin Clark, all that. I hear that. I hear you. Watching the game because of Caitlin Clark. If Caitlin Clark wasn't in it, if it was South Carolina versus, well, I don't know. Hey, man. Name the random school. Yeah, I don't know. Like Stanford Drew, Drew. or I don't know. Some some non, you know, big star would have been in much of a draw. Probably not. So, like, yeah, obviously it's important. But, like, you know, it just brings – it brings – I think Bryce framed it well in the beginning. He said – you came to see Clay, Caitlin Clark, and then you see this South Carolina team, and then it just brings more credibility to the women's basketball game because it's like, oh, we got this superstar Caitlin Clark, and these South Carolina girls is kicking up on her. What's this about? <laughs> hey, look, man. Nobody here to see you, Otis. All right. <laughs> if you know that reference, you know what I'm talking about. Star power. You know, that's that's what it is. You you didn't go to see Drew Hill. You wanted to see Cisco. Destiny's Child is going on tour right now. Be going to see Beyonce. Packs. That's that's just how I go, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's name the game for sure, man. They don't make it right, and especially, and I think that in the women's game, especially with stuff that's not quite as popular, you know what I'm saying? I think that. Uh, it, it it brings light to the unfairness even more. You know what I'm saying? If there was if this was a man a males team that was 38 0 and made the run through the championship through the tournament and won it all, it'd be a lot bigger deal, right? You can't convince me that otherwise. But you guys are right. Uh it's about stars. And uh that segues me into my next question for you guys. We're gonna talk about a real big star, perhaps one of the youngest, biggest stars that that's budding right now. And that's one Victor Webb and Yama. Uh, Victor Wimanyama, a.k.a. Wimby, just dropped his new logo, man. And, bruh, I, maybe I got caught in the recency effect, but I did say in the group chat that I felt like it's the best logo since the jump, man. Bruh. Did y'all see the alien Victor Wimanyama logo? And am I wilding, bro, or is that logo really fire? Uh, scroll mm -hmm. you think, man. Oh, my bad, Ron. Go ahead, go ahead, bro. No, nah, I was I was gonna say real quick. It's definitely a dope logo, a, a dope dope logo. I don't even want to trash it, bro. But comparing it to the Jumpman logo off, off rip, man. Like I don't know. Like that's the historic. That's the, you putting it up against against Father Time right there. So I mean, I don't know about all that, but it's definitely one of the better new logos that I've seen probably in the last five years. Yeah, I mean. Nah, Bryce, it was a little, it's a strong, it's a strong take, but like it wasn't, it's not out of the, it's not out of the conversation with the jump man. Yeah, the jump man is probably like his most iconic. The Nike swoosh is very iconic, right? But as far as like superstar logos go, I would say like, you know, you got the jump man. Yeah, LeBron's joint is cool, and the Mamba joint is cool, and I'm saying this this joint's right up there with those. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's a pretty good start, you know, <laughs> for as far as brand inception goes. And then there's something to think about, like, the uh, the people of this time, you know, the people of the times, if you will. Um, you know, people of the times are, you know, they, they're, they feel like they're different, you know, and they might fuck with an alien. You know what I mean? I, I would fuck with an alien. I feel like, you know, I feel, I feel, everything we all feel like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm an alien, you know? Oh, I'm, I'm different than everybody else. People want to be different. You know what I mean? So, like, I think that, I think it's good for this generation. The Gen Z is going to eat this shit up. <laughs> nah, fine. I'll tell you one logo is definitely better than uh, that that uh, that Shaq logo, boy. It's better than that. Uh, it's, it's one of the worst logos of all time. The Shaq logo was accurate, but like it's just it was associated with like you know that one was accurate. It looked like Shaq. This is it did look like Shaq. <laughs> T, what you think, man? Uh, Victor Wembanyama logo is it is it up there with the greatest of all time? It is the greatest of all time. Oh, okay. what? The greatest of all time. That's your fire, bro. I knew I wasn't tripping, bro. That's your greatest fire. of all time. Like, yeah, y'all been watching too much Three Body Problem, man. No, y'all four hundred no. years <laughs> ahead right now. No, the other the the other logos, um, they got their power from the person behind the logo, bro. That Wimby logo, I don't care if you gave it to a kid. Like if somebody just would have walked, if a if a fashion label, whoever designed that logo at Nike, man, promote promote them folks, whatever team that was, promote them folks, because you can market an alien in a million different ways, different universes, different dimensions, different galaxies, extra arms, like Space Jam, they was in space. 
Like the jump man is a human. He's just jumping. Cool. He's no different than Shaq on the rim. Jordan just ended up being greater than Shaq and his shoes wasn't at Walmart. Um, the LeBron James logo. Some people don't like that. They call him King. It's kind of eh. Kobe's logo. Eh, I feel like the shoes are more iconic than the logo. I don't see people wearing that logo on a shirt. Um, I do like Giannis's logo and I do like he has the whole freak line, which I think is kind of cool. But this Wimby alien logo, just trust me, in the colorways that you can pull off because it's an alien, you can start getting crazy, reflective, glow in the dark, iridescent. Like, I, I think Nike really nailed this one, man. This was a home run for Nike. I'd be surprised if, uh, have you seen uh, uh, Devin Booker shoes? Oh, I those are the Wimby throwaways, bro. I guarantee you, <laughs> I guarantee you what, whatever Wimby's coming with is going to be crazy. That's a good point because now the shoe, the shoes got to match the logo. And and I don't know exactly how they're going to put Because the thing about that logo is, is it's round, right? So it makes it a little tougher. It's to like a badge. Yeah, it's like yeah, a badge. I wonder how they're going to do it, yo. I wonder how they're going to put it on the shoe now. You, you bring up a real good point. But I like what you where you was going with the glow in the dark and that. That's a that's a good point, dog. The, I got to give you a little pushback, though. The Kobe logo is iconic like because... Bro, that joint is a whole snake in the logo, bro. Like that is fire, bro. Like it, 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 I feel like the best logos are like things that you don't you don't realize what they are. That's the that's the one thing about the Wimby logo is it it is very forward facing. It's straightforward exactly what it is. The best logo to me is like FedEx. Like, do you know there's an arrow in the FedEx logo, and it's the arrow stands for getting something from one place to the other, right? That yeah, is that, that 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 logo is weak though. That that logo is kind of weak. Fire, yeah. I, I, I like the got, Amazon, the A to Z. The Amazon got the A to the Z. Now I gotta give a shameless plug. If you look at the gas logo, go ahead and look in your top right corner, right? The reason the gas logo is what it is, because that, that first bracket is the backboard, and that other bracket is the field goal, right? And that's literally what we talk about most of the time is basketball and football on this on this podcast, right? You wouldn't have, a lot of people might look at the gas logo and not even realize that that's what it is. And it's also a text bubble because we write articles and we do the podcast and things like that, right? So the greatest logos are subtle, bro. And that's the one thing about Wimby's logo is it looks great, but it's not no real subtleties to it. It's clearly just a basketball with, with some alien heads, you know what I'm saying? And But T, you bring up a good point. There's a lot you can do with that. Now I'm excited to see what they do with the shoes, man. I'm really excited for that. The shoes, yeah. the sweat, the sweatpants, the sweatshirt, oh, yeah. the hats. Yeah, the whole see, that was that was a good selling point, man. I'm I'm probably about to be decked out in some of that. I'm trying to tell you, bro. <laughs> the whole line is coming. Wimby is uh, he's when we, we were just talking about the face of the league. Now the face of the league isn't even from this planet. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yo, the uh <laughs> The Devin Booker ones go crazy though. I ain't gonna lie. Them joints, them joints clean. It was like some of the cleanest basketball shoes. I like it's been a minute since I saw some basketball shoes that weren't retros. I'm like, yo, I would rock those outside but of basketball. Kyrie mm -hmm. has a popular Nike. Uh, Paul George has a good logo, but like I think I think Wimby about to get some fire, man. It gotta come with it gotta come with some fire shoes. I know that. I don't know if the Frenchmen are known for uh, their taste in uh, footwear. It's going to be better than the, the Zions and the Lucas. I, 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 French is where the fashion fashion happens, right? France. Uh, Paris Fashion Week type shit. Yeah. 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 I don't know if Wimby be, 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 be putting that shit on, though. I'm not sure. Okay. Wimby mess around, give you a casual shoe. He mess around, give you a joint that look like the, uh, the, McQu the Alexander McQueen's watch. <laughs> <laughs> with an air bubble. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> oh man, it really changed the game. That's right. You can wear them joints in the club. Watch. <laughs> All right, man. Well, let's keep it pushing, man. Shout out to Wimby. Shout out to that logo. Definitely fire. Excited to see what uh what comes of the shoes, man. So next topic, you know, we're gonna keep it with some competition, man. It was there was a little bit of a competition that uh. <laughs> That popped up over this last couple weeks, and it was one uh, Kendrick Lamar taking shots at the rap game, specifically two of the better folks in the rap game. When we talk about uh, Drake and J Cole, and within the last week, J Cole responded 
And J. Cole is one that usually responds when people talk to him crazy, but he usually, you know, usually talking to people's soul. It's not usually a diss. It's not usually too many jokes in his raps, you know what I'm saying? But he threw a couple jokes in there, a couple like blatant jabs at Kendrick, which I thought was interesting, especially considering that they have a rapport with each other and more or less friends. You know, they actually, there was a rumor that they was going to have an album together some years back, right? And apparently there was a couple songs that were done for that album. Um, they just never materialized. So I want to hear you guys take first on, uh, I mean, I, I think we already talked about Kendrick's diss originally, but I want to hear y'all's take on uh, J. Cole's diss track to Kendrick and his subsequent apology. <laughs> it wasn't like a I'm sorry apology, but it was more or less like a, yeah, I got caught up in the moment and I fucked up and I shouldn't have done that type of thing. Uh, so I want to hear y'all's take on that. And uh, yeah, then we'll, then, we'll, then we'll dive into some more, uh, maybe more rap beefs from, from the past. Uh, Scrub, we'll start with you, man. Uh man, you know the diss track was it had it had some couple zingers in there, you know what I'm saying? But overall, what didn't have that it just didn't hit like the uh like the other joint, you know. Like after I heard it, listened to it, you know, you listen to it the first time, you're like, oh, okay, they take the shots, you know what I'm saying? I feel it. It was it was it was really like a throwaway track, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like that don't really was feeling like a throwaway track. You feeling like he should have crumbled the ball up and do that joint in the trash can and and, and, and kept working on that one. Um, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I didn't like that. And uh, honestly, it just didn't have that sizzle, man. It brought out some of the, the you know, the, the worst characteristics of J. Cole. Is J. Cole, I would say the biggest criticism of J. Cole in his career is he, he hasn't been good at making hits. You know what I'm saying? When I was at the Drake concert, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I was like, yo, man, this guy, don't, he, he only got a couple, he was trying to play all his mainstream stuff. But, but like, he got like good album work. You know, he not really making hits like that. Kendrick come on the track. He say he don't really got to say too much. He had some some bars, but he ain't really go too crazy. But really, the production on that joint was really the difference, bro. Because, like, you come on with whatever boo-boo shit you got going on with uh with, with J. Cole. J. Cole production was was whack, bro. And did that, that Metro Boomin joint go <laughs> crazy. Um, so that automatically just takes the level up to it. Um, low key, the beat itself is just, and then it just, it was just loud, and I, it all go together, bro. And Kendrick just came on there with the swag, and it's just like, but the, 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 the apology, bro, it really, it really talking my what my soul, bro. It's that hurt, that hurt my soul, bro. Like to see that, cause it's like, bro, we all know you was, it wasn't that serious, bro. As far as like disses go, that shit was very friendly. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, like, you don't need to be feeling that type of way, my guy. So, like, I think we just in a generation where cats is just afraid to, like, you know, like, be coming at someone else. They don't want to be, you know, hurt nobody's feelings. And, um, you know, it's the same generation where all the NBA guys are all buddy-buddy, you know. And, like, you know, T said, like, that race war shit, man, that's that, you know, we want to feel the beef, man. You know, when Biggie and Pac was beefing, we felt that shit. You know what I'm saying? Pause. Um, you know what I'm saying? But, like, yeah. Like it, it's different, man. So yeah, it's, it was it's, it's a week, man. It's just be this beef is weak. The the, Ken, the J Cole uh the this track was weak, and Kendrick up Kendrick up big right now, bro. Like he only had to go in there and say like a simple ass bar, but he he flamed him with that simple ass bar. Mm, interesting take, man. Cause I got I thought the I thought the diss track was fire, bro. Personally, I thought Cole went went crazy on that, Joe. So to hear hear you think is weak is a take. I, I I'm surprised to hear, but I, I've heard I've seen it on on the, on the internet, uh, and I think a part of the difference between Ken, Kendrick raps with a lot of energy. You know what I'm saying? He go bow. You know he, go, he threw four bums in there, and people was feeling like bow. I'm like oh, he said something. He just said bum a few times. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Cole kind of a little more smoother, you know, more little, uh, a little more spoken word with the way he raps, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, Cole, it doesn't really lend to dissing, right? Um, but to push back on what you said, the difference between, you know, the guys in, uh, basketball being buddy, buddy and the rappers being buddy, buddy, you know, is that basketball beats usually don't end in uh, gunshot wounds, right? In, in, in deaths and murders. You know what I'm saying? Like rap beefs only go one place, bro. They they, they start on they start on on wax, and they end up uh, 
in the streets many, that, many times, bro. I got, I, I got to give pushback on that. I got to give pushback on that because I, 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 I agree with you to an extent. We obviously could all point to the violent outcomes of certain rap beefs, uh, but if we really, I'm sure all of us here know too, because we're all hip hop heads. If you really look at a lot of these rap beefs. A lot of them end in people doing songs together. A lot of them end in everybody being buddy buddy, squashing it for the bigger purpose. Uh, Jay Z and Nas were the biggest rap beasts of my lifetime. They're they're fine right now. They've done plenty of songs together. <clears throat> Drake and Meek Mill. People thought that that was that was some some you know going to get a little weird or whatever. They're they're straight. They're straight. Everybody's cool. So when it comes to J Cole and Kendrick, like this was supposed to be. The, the sparring rap beef that we were supposed to get where, where we knew it wasn't going to end violent, where we knew, we know both of them are mature dudes and not going to go that route, right? So before I give my full take, man, I, I want to say, like, I respect J. Cole as an artist. He's one of my favorite artists of all time. So if he, if he doesn't want to do the back and forth thing, that's cool. That's like his, his you know what I'm saying, prerogative as an artist. However, rap is, is competitive and he knows this. He knows rap probably better than I know rap. So rap being being is that rap is competitive and always has been. And you run around jumping on everybody's features talking about you're the best rapper, da 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 da. Why is it as soon as somebody gives pushback on that, another rapper calls you out, says fuck the big three, it's just me, meaning he's better than you. And then you give a couple shots back, now all of a sudden you want to apologize? Like the diss track was good, in my opinion. I, I feel like he the only reason he wants to apologize is because he made some fair points about Kendrick and now people are looking at, at, at Kendrick's catalog a little shaky and J. Cole realizes the power that he has and is like, oh, I don't want to like down my man too much. But Kendrick needs to stand on it. Kendrick started the beef. Like Kendrick threw a shot at you first. You're throwing a shot back and you're apologizing. Like, bro, like I don't know what generation we're living in anymore, man. Like, they're, like that's crazy. Like somebody disses you you diss them back, and before anything else happens, you apologize, bro. Like it doesn't even make sense. I feel you, but for every uh, for every rap beef where it ended in some dap, I can name you probably two of them ended in some some shots fired. All right, and I and I and I and I, and I get that, Gucci but why Gucci, Gucci and Jeezy? Somebody somebody passed away over that, right? Uh, and I'm not. I, that's without even me naming the big ones, bro. That we all know about. It's on the top of everybody's mind. Uh, young Do uh, Young Dolph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, there's still folks that uh, that blame uh, Yo Gotti in his camp for that, right? So I, I feel you. Uh, what's my man Bankroll Fresh? Yeah. yeah okay, yeah, but yeah. do do Cole and Kendrick bring bring that type of energy though? The Cole and Kendrick beef is not a is not a Gucci but Young Jeezy type like, of energy. I don't think they ever start with that energy, bro. It starts on wax. That's why mm. that's what I said. It starts on wax. That's and you true. never know where it's gonna go, right? And I feel you that we want to we want to give these these two the benefit of the doubt and say, hey, these two are our, two of our more conscious guys, right? So it shouldn't have, it probably wouldn't have gone there. But when you talk about somebody that's conscious, the ultimate conscious man recognizes when they overstep, bro. Like you know what I'm saying. So you talking about somebody that's truly conscious, they are gonna be like, he named the shit, might delete later. So the, so, so if, probably <laughs> already like. Uh, my, if, maybe you shouldn't put this one out. With my, like, this, and this is my Cole. final take on this, man. If if everybody was gonna have this conscious, righteous take on it, then Cole should have never dissed back in the first place. If you were that conscious, if you were that righteous, if you were that in tune with yourself, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have jumped back in the arena and sent it this back. Because the main shots were thrown at Drake, and Drake hasn't said a word. Well, that's facts, and I think that's why that's what leads to an apology, in my opinion. Right? You know, what I'm saying now. I think Cole going to catch a lot of flack for this too, and he knows he's going to catch flack for this, bro. You know, you know. But I saw somebody make a great tweet, bro. And I want to get it. I want to get it word for word. It was Tory Smith, former uh, former NFL wide receiver. I don't know if you guys saw this one, man. But uh, Tory Smith said, "Damn, I can't even find it." But uh, Tory Smith basically said something along the lines of, you know. Black men are the only ones that uh, are apologize or looked at as weak. Recognize their own mistake, apologize for it, and for that are looked at as weak. And it's hard for me to disagree with that, bro, because I feel like <laughs> he kind of he, he kind of was spot on with that, bro. And, and people looking at J. Cole as weak when really 
it might actually be the opposite, especially you, when you know the backlash you're going to get from an apology. When you know how people view you, when you know how people view rap, like apologizing is almost the biggest thing, is almost the number one thing you can't do. Tor Troy Smith said, a black man came to apologize for something that doesn't sit right in his own spirit without being called weak. That's wild. Um, That's real. Something, something to explore. T, I want to hear, hear your take, though. So, I mean, you know, I, I feel like these guys are a little bit um, after my era. I'm not really as impressed with them rapping as you guys are. Um, and I, I don't consider J. Cole conscious at all. <laughs> not at all. Kendrick, sure. J. Cole, no. But um, not, not at all. You're conscious with J. Cole, not? I, I mean, nah, I, J. Cole is not conscious. That's the other thing, too, man. He wants to take this righteous take. Go listen to that tape, bro. Like, he's he says some shit. It ain't like... He's on some like conscious bag, bro. Like hide your bitch, hide your wife. Like yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm from the era of like kind of actual conscious rappers where like there was a message outside of a, a outside of a general. Let's do the right thing and let's say the right thing. Like all he's doing is rapping politically correct, and people are amazed. Um, that's not really that conscious to say you shouldn't drink lean, you shouldn't <laughs> shoot another. That's not really conscious, bro. That's common sense. Um, but it's not. But it's not common sense, bro. That's the it, problem. No, it's, it's, abs it's absolutely. No, it's it, it's also just not common because, like, we we also in the era of Molly Percocet. Molly Percocet. <laughs> like, come on. Bro. I mean, but like, this this, this, is, this is my biggest problem with everybody that's saying Cole is so righteous, bro. When Kendrick originally dropped the uh the diss, he dropped it on the Molly Percocet type of nigga. He dropped it on that type of song, bruh. Like and nobody was like, oh, let's not do that. Let's let's all do the right thing and not diss anybody. Like everybody <laughs> ate that shit up. Everybody wanted the beef. Cole sent the shots back because that's what we wanted as as fans of an entertain of a uh, form of entertainment. And now it's like, oh no, let's let's be like bigger people. Like what? Bro, they they Cole blew a bag because it could have been, you could approach this diss or, or, or this competitive rapping so many different ways. You could have said, hey, let's both get on the same beat. You pick the beat. Let's see who got the better verse. You could have said, hey, let's freestyle and let's see who could go the longest. Like, you could have approached this so many different ways. You chose a diss track saying what other people have thought, that Kendrick's catalog has some blemishes in it. And now, so, and I agree with Rome, you feel bad because the the noise is agreeing with what you said. And maybe you don't believe it. So maybe that's why I don't sit well in your spirit. You feel like you got up there and you were lying. But at the end of the day, bro, it's a it, it's competitive. You use your, your lyrical ability. You made a diss. Let Kendrick reply, then apologize, right? Then say, all right, we got the one back and forth. And that's my guy. I don't want to go to the next level. Then people can understand, like, oh, he, maybe he don't want to take bro head off. But what you just did, apologize, you, you swung, and he said, teacher, teacher, teacher. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, now, now it looks crazy. And what it also does is, I say I'm not a big cold guy, but part of his allure is people believe when he got on, gets on tracks and raps with like Benny the Butcher and, and does all these lyrical maneuvers and yeah i'm the guy now it's like mm, you might be the guy but i how much are you the guy like we don't we don't really believe it anymore like like right. the bravado you lost some of that bravado you lost some of the fan base's willingness to back you because in a argument of stands because that's what social media has turned into a stand war and the, you gave the other side so much ammo and you apologize. The, the apology was so long, I almost turned it off. I ain't gonna hold you. I almost didn't get through it. The apology was the apology was longer than Kendrick's diss. The apology was longer than your diss. I, I, I don't even know what seven minute drill means, but I think it means false alarm. <laughs> like, 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 so from now on, whenever it's a false alarm somewhere, I'm gonna say, "Hey, bro, it's seven minute drill. Don't worry about it." You know what I'm saying? Like. That is crazy. And I really wanted to see those guys be competitive. And 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 I didn't really want to see them bashing each other. But I, I thought that they could rap and, and, and rap back and it would be cool. Um, 
but I don't even know why he rapped. It's, he's allowed to apologize. He's absolutely allowed to apologize. And that's probably the right decision in the long run. Probably. Because, like, it could have went somewhere crazy. Bryce, you have a really good point. Because even if me as the rapper, I'm cool with Kendrick the rapper, that don't mean my entourage cool with Kendrick. That don't mean my entourage cool with Kendrick entourage. That don't mean the women I'm dealing with cool with the women. You know what I'm saying? It It's potential for people to start picking sides when you place two people at that stature on opposite ends. Like you said, Dolph and Yo Gotti. People love both sides of those. Now we do a feature with Kendrick. Am I hating on Dolph? I mean, do people think I'm sneak dissing if I if I do a feature with Kendrick? You can get ugly quick. You can get ugly quick. Yeah, so, so I appreciate the fact that if his heart wasn't in isn't in it at all like don't do it i appreciate that but like it looked crazy now it it, it, it looks super crazy and it looked, it, yeah my bad my bad nah nah go ahead i i feel you i feel you it looked it looked crazy it looks craziest to the ones that just like want to see some beef bro. but like that's but what, who it looked craziest to bro but what what happens if if kendrick starts off with his uh his next verse with i'm i just made a light-skinned nigga tap out now what happens I mean, if I if I'm if I'm Kendrick, bro, if, something like that. Well, yeah, that that line specifically is crazy. But if I'm Kendrick, that's what I'm leading with, though. I'm coming out like, bro, like, like, bro. Rap is way too competitive, and Cole has talked too much competitive shit to do that, bro. Like, that's crazy, bro. T's analogy is is spot on, bro. Like, you got smacked, you smacked the dude back, and then called for security, called for the teacher. Like how you gonna hit somebody and then and then say time out? That, <laughs> like, you know, that, that's the part why I, I definitely understand what y'all are saying because that's not. But I wonder if that's where that's. I don't think Cole did that, bro. I don't think that's what he, he did. He didn't do it that exactly, bro. But he he got his leg back and then and then said, "Oh, we're done now. You can you can say something back, but I feel bad. I'm gonna take the high road now." Like, and and all these takes that I see online, bro, about everybody taking the high road. Nobody felt that way when Kendrick jumped on a track with Future and Metro Boomin, who have been sneak dissing Drake. Like everything the charges named about, oh, well, if I get on this person's song, you're like, that's literally what Kendrick did, bro. And people ate it up. Like Drake been yeah. sneak dissing for years. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know. I don't think. I don't think. Kendrick was so much of a sneak diss, bro. Nah, that, was that very, shit wasn't no that was sneak. A very direct diss, bro. It wasn't. It no wasn't. Sneak a, it bro. wasn't a sneak diss, but it was. It was very. It was. It was blatant. It was like, okay, I'm gonna get on a song with people that I know you have some type of problem with, and I'm gonna diss you because we're we're drawing lines. We're picking right. sides. Like like how all those rap beefs that ended terribly, you just alluded to. Everybody started picking sides, and that's what Kendrick did. Kendrick drew a line. And maybe that's why Cole wants to bow out. Maybe maybe that's why. Maybe Cole's looking at it like that. Like Kendrick drew a line where people have been posting memes like it was the Avengers, uh, Metro, Future, Kendrick, you know, versus Drake, Cole, whoever. So may, maybe that's where he's looking at it from. No, but bro, that's I don't that's, know. That's, that's, bro, that's exactly what it is. Because from the Metro, from the Future, from the Rick Ross, from the everybody that unfollowed Drake, bro. They're picking sides because it's real. Now I don't know if if it's real enough for people to lose their life, but it's right, it's a well, real it, situation. And if it's real and you're J Cole, this okay. Then now we in a different conversation, and this is what I'm yeah. saying. Because if it's real and you're cold and you are truly an enlightened individual, bro, you see where it's headed, bro. Like that's the thing that y'all missing right now, in my opinion. And mm -hmm. and everyone that's that wants beef so bad for the sport of beef, you know, and want to yeah, and want to just. They want to see this. They want to see the competition. No. This is not basketball. This is points don't go on the board in this bro, sport, right? Bro. The points that go on the board oftentimes are by have in the past been bodies dropping, right? Bro, and I'm bro. not saying that this is gonna get there, but maybe if you J. Cole, you see the traject the traject trajectory. I'm having a T moment from earlier. Yeah. The trajectory <laughs> of where this is headed, and maybe not where it's headed, but where it could go. Because not only do you know your opponent. But better than you know your opponent, you know yourself, right? Bro. And I think Cole realizing like, all right, if I stay in this, there's only one place this is gonna go because I'm I'm gonna die about this. He gonna die about this, like, and not literally, not literal death, right? But like, I'm never gonna give this shit up. We gonna be talking shit about Fifty Cent and Ja Rule talking shit about each other to this day, bro. It ain't made neither of them a dollar to talk shit to this point, that's right? A, that's 
that's, so, that's a so what I'm saying is like you see where it's headed, you see the trajectory, and maybe you like ah ah that's not that's not that's not, that's not what I'm about, and that's not what I'm trying to be represented but, by. Well, that's well, that's the problem because on brand for Cole would have been to come out with a my brother's keeper song and, and, and show love to both sides and try to bridge the gap in some unity. That would have been very on brand for Cole. I don't think I don't think that based off J. Cole's career, I don't think that would have been on brand. I think would have been would have been more on brand was like the joint where he was in the where he was in the bus and he straight talked to Kanye and he straight talked to Wale, but it never got disrespectful. It never got shitting on what they've done, shitting on their art form. Because see, when you're a person that puts a certain amount of passion out, the only people that can truly relate to you are others that put that amount of passion out. See what I'm saying? And I think Cole's realizing, like, yo, I'm I'm shitting on somebody. Who's the closest to me as far as like Bro. putting this level of passion out? My and man. To me, it's probably a realization. Like, yo, when you got two people that are this passionate, there's only one way this is gonna go unless somebody ends it before it goes there. And right. I think that's what Cole, I think that's what Cole tried to do. Now, well, he, well, he, that, did he miss did he miss the target? Maybe, but well, that's what he should have said, but he didn't say that. He stood on stage and said, I couldn't sleep on, I couldn't sleep at night, I couldn't sleep for three days straight. Bro, because because, it, because when you because when you really invested, bro, when you're truly truly invested, bro, it's shit that it's 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 shit that it's shit that truly invested folks can lose sleep about, bro. Like that's, bro, that's a fact. A, bro. That is a fact, but you should have never dropped that record. Like that's the part. That's the point of apology. Bro, bro said he was I losing sleep because because he said to pimp a butterfly was boring. Realize I should have never dropped that record, bro. Right, because it, bro, all this is is somebody got on stage and said. I don't really want these type of problems. And, and, and that he, he said it in the most eloquent way. Like, I don't really want these type of problems with these people. I, I believe I can rap, but I don't want these type of problems. And I don't think that's what it was, bro. bro I, I don't think I think it was more of those, I don't want these type of problems, and nah. you not gonna want these type of problems neither. And that's no, what I think it was. No, bro. no, that's hey, what I think it was. Hey, listen to me. Listen to me. J. Cole is a college educated Fayetteville kid when Drake is subbing and dissing these rappers he's telling them hey you lucky me and my mans wasn't at that event you lucky this hey I'm out here we don't see y'all boys Drake talk a little greasy to these guys and that's why Metro and Future they talking greasy right back like we don't trust you we don't trust you like it ain't no and I'm not saying it's gonna come to guns. I, I don't think I think it would be crazy to shoot Drake, Future, Metro, or anybody in their camps. But what their camps could potentially do, that I think J. Cole said, yeah. bro, I don't want that problem. I'm yeah, I think I think I, th I think where that. where it's going is is the the fan base wants a Cole Kendrick, you know, back and forth on wax, right? But I think where Cole sees it is where it's starting at the way they and the way that Kendrick started it by jumping on the track with Future and Metro. That the beef with Future Metro and Drake, that's not a rap beef. That's not like they throw subs at each other on on records, but that's not really based in rap. Like right. Kendrick versus J. Cole is based in rap, and that's why a lot of people wanted to see them go back and forth. But again, like my overall point, and T said it too, man. Like if Cole's heart isn't in it as an artist. You don't have to go back and forth with somebody. That doesn't have to be your form of art. So if his heart's not in it, I can I can agree with that. But I mean, I guess at least we got what we got, right? Bruh, like J. Cole, and, and, and people look at this like Kendrick threw the first punch. No, first person shooter. Like yeah. the entendre is there. Like, bro, you started, you jumped on a track with Drake. Drake probably already had first person shooter. You got on that track. And you knew you were talking about Kendrick and you were being friendly and it's not the friendliest of situations that the same thing with Pusha T and Drake. It's not the friendliest of situations. Everybody's looking at it at lyrical ability. How could it be lyrical ability when future is never going to outbar Drake? Metro Boomin yeah. is a producer. Chill, 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 chill. No, he, he never, hard. never. Never, you can never outbar. <laughs> that's, that's not bar you break, all right? Because that's not what he does. He doesn't outbar you. So it's not it, the battle isn't a who can make the best song. That's what Kendrick and, and that's what the fans want to see from Kendrick and Cole. Like I said, I, I really think though that fan base is a 
college student fan base. The college student fan base is the small percentage of hip hop. <laughs> like, but there's no such thing as a in hip hop, bro. There's no such thing as an uh, an out bar duel unless you watch battle rap. All right, if you want to see some, two Bamas out bar each other. Go watch battle rap, bro. No, no, no. Because, because hold on, hold on. Because, Cannabis, because LL Cool J, it's been bro, a while. bro. Wait, wait, wait. It gets personal, bro. Every, each and every time, bro. Right. Hey, yo, I'm out barring you. I'm out, my bars is clean. Go watch battle rap if you want to see somebody get out barred. Because in the, on this on this stage and on this level, it always gets personal. It, get, it gets That's personal when battle get rap. And when she gets personal with rap, bro. So. I feel y'all, but at the same time, I feel cold, and I, hey, and, I and I see, I see both sides, but I also can see like how, as a fan of hip hop, y'all want to see that duel go down, bro, because we want to know. You know what? You know what Cole just did, bro. Y'all seen Boys in the Hood? When Trey got out the car, that's what Cole just did. Yes, it is. That's exactly what he did. <laughs> he when he he was hot, he was emotional. Yeah, let's. Man, yeah, no, let me out. And you gonna get out. no, no, <laughs> who he was, no, let me out. Yeah. <laughs> hey, and because of who he was, that was the right move, though, man. That it was, was right it was move. exactly. Like, if that, if exactly. That was just, everybody that, gonna that, say it's the right move, but if that was just the right move, move like, tell you, nah, you should have stayed in that car and caught three bodies, no. Trey. Like, yeah. because, well, Trey, Trey should have caught a couple bodies that night. Huh? No, when you the when you the good kid, when you the good kid, real ones gonna respect that. So I think Future Metro, all of them, I think they're gonna respect that. I don't know how K that feels, but I think other artists are gonna respect uh, what J Cole did. But I also feel like other artists now look at J Cole as food. Like I say, yeah. whatever, I'll, I'll say whatever I want to you. You, what are you gonna do? Good luck. Apologize to Good me. Good luck. Good luck. Because <laughs> the thing about the, the, the thing about it is like, and, and then one thing J. Cole said, bro, is like, you know, he 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 alluded to like he's turning the other cheek, you know what I'm saying? But like someone that someone that gives I, and this is why I don't think Kendrick's gonna say nothing back to Cole, bro. I truly don't think so. Because you know, you turn the other cheek, and if if uh, Kendrick goes crazy on J. Cole's other cheek, pause, and, and swings yeah. and swings for the fences, right? All right, dog. Like, like this, 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 and I don't know, I don't want to call it a chess move because I don't think it's that. But it's like if Kendrick takes goes goes like goes harder than Cole did on his diss track to diss Cole, right? I, I don't think he will. I don't think he will either. Cause, but cause, now it's like, now it's like, okay. Like this is why I don't think I don't think nobody gonna try Cole moving forward, bro. Because Cole no. just showed you, like, bro, he lyrically he 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 no one's touching Cole, bro. Okay, no one's touching Cole, bro. Okay, I oh, think goodness. Cole is Kendrick actually- is right there with Cole, and that's why we all wanted to see this. And I I don't know, man. Like I don't think Kendrick's gonna diss Cole like that. I wouldn't be surprised if there is a slick bar it's gonna be in, some in a song a few where he if Kendrick can find a way. To diss Drake via dissing Cole tapping out, then he gonna do that. Like, and expect Drake to come back with some. Hey, my man, I told my man put the gun down. I got it. Like, just yeah. Because <laughs> like, Drake don't, and, and, and that's why the, that's why the machine behind you is what this shit is all. This shit is all the facade because you know, <laughs> we know Drake. Drake ain't. No, it's not all the facade, bro. Drake got the machine behind him. Drake got money where he can pay. He can pay. The, he can pay whatever gangster he want to have his back. You know what I'm saying? Drake has Jay Prince. Jake. Uh, Drake has uh, hoods where he's from. Like he got Baka not nice on his team. I mean, you bro. know, he got the Somalis with him. I, I know Drake. I know Drake's not no <laughs> Drake. Got a bro. game. I'm not. I'm not saying he's a game. But what I'm saying is like, all right, all that bread dry up, Drake. We gonna see who's still there for you. You know what I'm saying? I think Cole and Kendrick got folks that ride with them no matter what. Um, it, it, I'm good. interested to see how it plays out, bro. I'm I'm very interested to see how it plays out. I don't think it's the end of it. I don't think it's over, over. Like, it's not over, over. So, um, Drake Drake had planned on taking taking off of music. Like, he said he was taking off for a while. So, I don't really expect Drake to release anything 
2024. I mean, maybe it will, maybe it won't. But I, I, I honestly don't expect any music from Drake anytime soon. He just dropped all them albums. He just went on tour. It's not, what's the incentive? Like to start a, you know what I'm saying? He said he was having health issues. I don't, I don't see it. I feel like Drake could drop next year and fans will still be waiting on it. Like, it's fine. And I think it's best for all parties if everybody kind of lets this blow over. Yeah, after what Cole did, man, they kind of do need to just let it blow. <laughs> That's a good point. Leave, yeah, leave the rap beef to the bad. women, man. <laughs> well, yeah, man, Cole, let a lot of people down, man. Let a lot of people down. Should have apologized in song form. We might have consumed that a little better. Nah, thanks. That probably would have hit way harder. No, it would have been whack as fuck. <laughs> I'm no, interested to see what comes, man. I feel like um, I don't like Cole, but I feel struggle. like if it was weighing on, if it was weighing on his soul, bro, I feel like he did the he did the right thing in that case, man. Because I think that gets a little deeper than like a rap a rap beef, bro. This is like, this is when they realized who the Wizard of Oz actually was. That's this type of moment. They pulled the curtain back, and he pulled it back with himself. Like, <laughs> I'm just a man. <laughs> no, let me out. <laughs> bro, don't let me out. That's, bro, that's what it was. But I mean, he said I, J. Cole I respect, that, I respect that. I respect that. I respect that. I, nah, I mean, I'm, yeah. I think I think we all agree, like, if Cole's heart wasn't in it, then that's cool. But, like, I, I wish he would have spoke up sooner or just not made the diss. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, yeah, that's that's. But no more, no more saying you're the best anything. Yeah, that, I mean, those days are done. I think that's gonna be my new uh, motto to life. You know, like, you know, you just just sleep on it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But before like, before you before right. you do what you're thinking about doing, just just just, just, just sleep on it, bro. That's a fact. I think Cole let the I think Cole let the noise. Yep. The, the initial noise of Kendrick and what was said about him get to him a bit. You know Bro, that saying? song's a banger. If you go out, you're going to hit is. it. Yeah, like, it is. That's the first <laughs> impulsive move we've seen from Cole. Oh, yeah. That joint going to be the song of the song. That's what it right? was. And 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 Cole's not an impulsive dude. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's right. calculated. He's he's calculated. And I think uh, I think that's probably why, why it ate at him. Because he's like, uh, I, let, I let my impulses get the best of me. You know what I'm saying? And I don't think I don't think it's because Cole like I can't kill this nigga, bro. Like no, I think nah. Cole is like nah. I don't think that's the case Cole, either. That's, that's, that's part of the reason. Forward, bro. Like, that's how I think. That's I part think of the reason the fan base is like, upset, bro. though. I think if I think Cole's looking at it like, bro, if this goes any further, I'm gonna have to kill this. I'm gonna have. I, I'm gonna kill. I'm gonna kill him. I'm a killer. I could kill him. But no, he's like, no. he's yeah. like, what does it look like? Man. if We both trying to kill each other. I, I like Cole more than I like Kendrick, bro. And I, I enjoyed that diss. I was I, I was really sticking it to a lot of the Kendrick fans that swear his catalog is so untouchable. Like I, I really wanted them to go so for so, man. So I'm I'm disappointed. Cause I agree with you, Bryce. I think I think Cole could take Kendrick's head off. And I think that's why a lot of the fan base is so upset. It's cause we 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 saw you getting ready to win this battle and then you quit. Like you quit on us, man. So it is what it is, but like I said, if it if it don't sit right with him at the end of the day, that's what's most important. So I'm glad he's doing what's what's right for him as an artist. That boy's doing what's right for his health. Yeah, I keep talking about for an artist, he can out rap him or at the very least rap with him, bro. He's doing what's right for his health and for his future and, and possibly the future of the other rappers. Like, cause I, I really do think this future Drake could get ugly because. Drake's going to go to Atlanta and Houston and, you know what I'm saying? Like, those guys have to see each other. They're going to be in the same rooms. And if it's bad blood, it's, it's, it's going to be bad blood. And J. Cole put himself directly in the middle of that. So I think he's doing what's, what's best for everything, not just rap, because he can rap like that. Rapping has never been a problem for him. He, Kendrick don't rap. Rap might be a problem for Kendrick. Nah, Kendrick rap too, bro. Come on, bro. Kendrick rap. Bro, you can't tell me that you rap and you only come out every three, four, five years. Oh, I see what you're saying. Bro, 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 bro. I, get, I, get I believe, it. I believe, I believe Kendrick has dropped the same amount of music as J Cole over that time. So, like, what albums, yeah, but the difference is J Cole is on them features all crazy. features, mixtapes, 
Okay. Radio freestyles. It's and not then J. Cole record. drops the collabs with his with his with his team. Yeah, what was what was Kendrick's last uh feature or song before the before this feature jump? Black Panther. Couldn't tell you. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Nah, it was, it was, nah, his last his last album. No, the last time he was featuring oh, somebody feature. else's song. Wasn't it yeah. him and Sizzle on Black Panther or something? Miss me with that bullshit. That <laughs> Hey, that, <laughs> hey, Black Panther, right? yeah, that, that Black Panther joint went crazy. That was one of the it best soundtracks hard, in a bro. long time. Hey, yo, the uh, other thing too is like J. Cole, that album that he dropped was was fire, bro. Like too late, too bad. That joke going crazy, bro. Too like bad. that joke top to bottom is like it's one of the cool, best, bro. one of the best shits that's been dropped this year. Uh, it's the same thing as when we found out Drake had a ghostwriter, like. That album is crazy, but it don't hit the same. Yeah. And guess what, bro? Drake still got ghostwriters, and you know, there's a lot of a lot of people still to call him the best rapper. So he, we he, live in a society where you, you can easily turn the page, bro. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? We, bro, everyone's forgotten about Drake <laughs> being a ghostwriter, bro. Nah, we, is, these, these comments are hilarious. We not, that shit's been that shit been over, bro. Like nobody, nobody holding that against the man no more. Meek said real things about Drake. Pusha said real things about Drake. And, uh, you know, the page just gets turned. Dog. The page gets no, I, 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 I hear you, bro. Drake turned the page. Well, nah, that, that, bro, when Pusha first announced that Drake was hiding a kid, bro, like, come on. I was looking at Drake sideways like shit, bro. <laughs> I was like, damn, bro, you got a whole child, you ain't say shit, like, what, what, what now this nigga bro? coming out with it and shit, like, why you got shit man, posted the IG, and it's hey, all good now. Why, why did why did Drake bow out of that battle? Because he, he he didn't apologize, but he kind of said, "You know what? I'm done." When he was talking to LeBron, why? It's the same situation because the next level it gets to would yeah. be crazy, right? Yeah, because well, that, that's what I'm saying. That's is, just... Drake did that, and it's no it's no backlash, bro. It, it it just he's still at the pinnacle, bro, and. He still, to your point, with the stand. Yeah, but a lot, a lot of people say that he took the L to push her as far as the rap beef goes. He did. Yeah. Right. So, that's what I'm saying. Like, so Cole, Cole's taking an L. This yeah, can blow over, but Cole's taking an L. The battle's over. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll see. We'll see if it's White over. Because you know, Kendrick still could have something to say about that. But like, that's the thing. Drake can still. Drake still gets to call himself the best, though. Like y'all telling me, ain't no saying you the best. Yeah, all right. we'll see I'm how long you, you can't say you the best. I'm gonna tell you uh, why Drake get to call himself the best because, he, like I said, he turned his own page. I mean, we're gonna do a record breaking tour. We are gonna drop hit after hit after hit after hit. We are gonna keep putting out bangers, right? Because that's what our job so, is. To, 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 to Bryce's music. point, though, to Bryce's point, Cole's been hop, hyping the fall off the album for a while now. That shit gotta go crazy. When he drops the fall off, it's got to be fucking lace, bro. And it, honestly, it was already trending that way because of all the features and all the shit he been talking. He but after this, bro, it's got to it's gotta be crazy. He's going to push that album back. Every verse where he's saying how good of a rapper he is and how he's... Go rewrite those, bro. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Well, you didn't want to hear Cole to begin with. I, I didn't want to hear Cole to begin with, but I respected his confidence. And now I don't buy it for it. And I still think he's confident. I still think he feels like he's a rapper, but like if rap is competitive, you just said you don't want to compete and I don't care what the reason is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're not willing to die behind your lyrics. I, I get it. But there's some rappers out there that are. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good point. A lot of those ones are dead. Unfortunately. Uh, yeah, they are. <laughs> they are. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what did, man. Yeah, I feel it. I feel. I feel. I feel it. Like man. And it, feel Cole it. and and Kendrick were never in a big three to begin with, but it was cool. It was you know what I'm saying some little cute little saying. I always felt like they were the big three. I always felt like it was Drake, Kendrick, and Cole. Bro. I always no, like no, it's an accurate statement. Drake, Future, Yay, and then maybe Travis. Yeah, we talking about like if we're talking about overall, just like culture hits. Then I agree with you. That's the big three. But we talking about bars. Yay to me is a is an era before them, right? Mm -hmm. If we talking about like bars of like my what I like to term call my era, you know what I'm saying? To me, it's been Drake, Cole, and Kendrick, bro. Like those are the three you get bro. to rank. 
those are the three that everybody they in everybody's top five of this era. Nobody's saying Travis Scott got the yeah. best bars, bro. Nobody. Like, nobody's you, saying that shit. And to you, you just told me that Future can't outbar nobody because that's not what he does. So then that means nobody's saying not. Future got the best so, bars. If we just talk about big three, if, if big three just means lyrics, I, I guess I see what you're saying. Then I, I you still got some more competition. Like you Kendrick hasn't shown me a lyrical display better than Wale. Like, like, they're, yo, like, thank you, T. Still, I've been saying that since fucking Kendrick dropped, bro. Like, like, yo, my final point, because I know we're running late on this, bro. A lot of people, a lot of Kendrick fans act like that nigga is the best rapper or better than other people because of his content. It has nothing to do with his actual talent and everything to do with, oh, well, he's rapping about good things and important things. And we should all listen to that. And we probably should. But I'm going to be honest with you, bro. Music is subjective. And not everybody wants to listen to a history lesson when they pop in a CD or pop in their iPad, whatever they listen to, Spotify, Apple Music. Like, a lot of the times you want to listen to something ignorant. A lot of times you want to have fun with your music. So people ranking Kendrick as high as they rank him, a lot of the times it's just based off Oh well, he made this powerful song that that is inspirational for the culture, and I'm not knocking that. I'm just saying that doesn't make you better than a Drake. People rate Kendrick where they rank Kendrick because, okay, the the big three they all have their different attributes, right? Drake is the bar guy who's also crazy mainstream. Cole is the bar guy who also hops on all these features and kills it each and every time. Kendrick is the bar guy who has an absolute master, an undeniable masterpiece, bro. Then let's not forget, like Good Kid, Mad City is an undeniable masterpiece, bro. Like top to bottom, every track. Dog, that shit was made in a lab, bro. That shit is immaculate. And I'm not even the biggest Kendrick fan, bro. But when we talk about Good Kid, Mad City, like, like they 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 the big three because they all kind of did it differently, but they all got a claim to it, bro. They all got a claim to the Iron Throne type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like if this was Game of Thrones, they all got a claim to the Iron Throne, bro. Some way, somehow. And I no, feel that's like that's fact. why they the big three. That's if I'm fact. talking about Travis Scott and we talking about rap royalty, I can't. I don't have a, a claim to the Iron Throne for Travis Scott. Like and and and, and maybe as a diehard Future fan, I could make that for Future. But somebody that's a, their favorite rapper is KRS-One could never make that claim for future. You know what I'm saying? But if your favorite is favorite rapper of all time is KRS-One, you know I could you could you could bring yourself to make a claim for all three of these dudes. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's why they, in my opinion, was kind of like the big three. Like they, it was like which one is that's the debate, bro. Nah. Can, Kendrick Cole and Drake was really out of the debate most of the time because most people default was putting him at one. So it's usually like, yo, Kendrick and Cole. Like, you know what I'm saying? But well, we know who's at three now. We'll see. We'll no, nah, I'm gonna tell you. For now, because for a minute, bro. when Drake came out ghostwriting, people was putting him. There was there was rappers saying, like, bro, you can't you can't get past this. If you someone writes your rap shit, man, that shit is temporary, bro. bro. You it's are a temporary. sidebar on one of the big threes tours and then you apologize to the other one at the same time <laughs> at the same time you did them both at the same time when you put it like that when you put it like that it's <laughs> <laughs> it, it wasn't even no space in between like <laughs> you came off a, you came off a, a, a small leg of a tour uh, on your man's tour and then apologize to the other one all right <laughs> cole, cole let a lot of a lot of people with uh bachelor's degrees and master's degrees down you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> oh, it's a, he, 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 a lot of intellectuals are, are, are saddened by this. I'm looking at both of my master, my master's and my bachelor's degree <laughs> right now on the floor. And I'm thinking, like, <laughs> <laughs> what, are worth? what are these papers even worth? <laughs> I'm thinking, like, damn, Cole let me down for real. You right, though, bro. You right. He did, though. I mean, I'm disappointed. I understand what Bryce is talking about. Bryce, Bryce, one of those guys too, bro, for real. But like, yo, I understand, bro. Like, he did do the right thing, but it, it hurts, man. It hurts to see. <laughs> it hurts to see him to bro, do, because, do that in the public because forum. When you know, when you know, when you know you got, when you know you a killer, bro. Like, you don't really got to prove it, dog. That's and, a when, fact. and when you and when you bring yeah. yourself to a point where you had to prove it, you you realize like, 
Dog, I'm not even proving this for myself, bro. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I feel like Cole had a moment of, like, damn, bro. I'm trying to prove to y'all I'm a killer. I know I'm a killer. What am I doing, bro? And don't get me wrong, bro. Like, if if Cole is put in a situation where he has to kill, he going to kill shit, bro. But he was put in a situation where he didn't have to kill, and he opted to show he was a killer. And he's like... What the fuck? This don't even. This not. This don't even sit right with my soul, dog. Like, you know, what I'm saying? and I and I feel where you're coming from for that. But at the same time, I see the other side too, where it's like, then why do you put yourself in a situation, bro? You know what I mean? Uh, so it, it, it it's definitely two sides of a coin there, bro. But uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I'm interested to see how this shit shakes out. I'm real interested to see. How, I don't think it's the end of this. I don't think it's the end of it for Kendrick. But something tells me it's also not the end of it for Cole, bro. Um, okay. Because I feel like he might get pushed to that point where it's like, all right, now I got to do now I got to do what I never wanted to do, right? You know what I'm saying? And hey, now that would be some epic shit. That would be now if Cole stepped back in the arena on some like, look, I told y'all not to fuck with me. I tried to bow mm -hmm. out and come with some some crazy shit, some crazy bars. That would be crazy. But when he I does know. that, when he does that, just know. He ready to get shot for it now. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. now he's like, <laughs> bro, all logic's out the window, bro. And I can see that's what I'm saying. I'm not sure it won't go there, bro. I'm not totally sure it won't go there. I feel like the man is like, let me not let it go there. But dog, like, you know, we're gonna see. We're gonna see. I'm interested to see this shake out, dog. I'm I'm excited for it. I'm excited for it. I think I think Kendrick gonna say something. I think Drake gonna say something. I feel like future is just uh future just future gonna make everybody bop their head while you know throwing some some out. Future's no. about to drop another uh another tape this Friday, right? What? Yeah, him, I thought him and Metro still got something this Friday. Oh, it was, we, we still don't trust him. Man, if they was playing, I was out over the weekend, they was playing future in the functions, man. That boy the goat, man. Uh, <laughs> I know Drake is y'all's a lot of y'all's goats, but y'all know, y'all know future is my goat, bro. So I Future going crazy right now, bro. What that, what that say? Members only. It's the, it's the old joint. That's the Drizzy. old joint. You got the Drizzy merch. Yeah, got well, the hey, let's grab my fellow October brother. Yeah, man, I got the Drizzy bro. merch. I ain't, know what, I ain't know what that shirt said. I'm like, what's going on here? Bro, you don't know who the members are? That's OVO, man. Oh, no, nah, I don't know about the members, bro. I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not a Drake you, stand, bro. He went, come on, man. The members on the job on the last album? Yeah, you know, members, only. members only, baby. You two oh, yeah. now with the oh, gang. gang. Hey, yo, I, yeah, I, know <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't know they calling his, his squad the members now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, all right. Drake better, Drake better stop playing my boy Future, all right? The future will end, future will end Drake. Future, future is not like J. Cole. He's not, future's not a, a measured individual. Uh, he, 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 he just try to crank. He just try to crank. If you stand away bro. from him uh, cranking, he going. All right, man. Y'all have not hey, learned bro, If you going to come with the disc, though, you got to come like like Drake came on the on the, on the on the back to back. You know what I mean? That's, that's how you going to come. Bro, you will if see you going to drop some shit, you got to drop some shit like that. You'll see Drake in Atlanta with a Russell Wilson jersey on, bro. Yeah, <laughs> like Drake, Drake, hey, Drake, Drake. Next song about to be with Sierra, like shit. It's gonna Drake's be a, a hit. Calculated guy. <laughs> that's the same. Drake, Drake gonna bring insane. Sierra back, bro. Drake with a Drake with a Sierra feature in the video wearing a Russell Wilson jersey would be insane. <laughs> but I'm trying to tell you, bro. If anybody, if anybody could get Drake, it's my guy, Future man. All right, just letting y'all know, bro. I'm letting y'all boys know right now. Drake don't want it with future, bro. But I think the what the added insult to injury is the, what the, these disc records is, is this shit gonna be spinning all summer, bro. That future joint with with with, with Kendrick, that shit's gonna be because 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 he talking that talk, he talking that street say, you know what I'm saying on that joint, that, and they ain't never gonna play that J Cole shit in the club. I mean, maybe that's maybe why off ones. that's why Drake don't want it with future, bro. Because dog. I will make I will make hits at the same rate you make hits. See, Drake wins beefs because he gonna put his beef in a hit. It is like I'm overshadowing you. I'm outshining you so much because like 
my hit it, my beep is is a hit. And when uh when 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 someone can do the same thing and future can I don't care what y'all say, future can make hits at the same rate as Drake, bro. Maybe then maybe each one not gonna be as big, but I'm telling you, bro, nobody making hits. He's the closest to, to Drake at making hits, bro. Bro, Drake, it's a reason why these dudes don't talk crazy to Drake, man. He you I don't think it's a situation of just making better music. You got you gotta have all your affairs in order. You gotta have your money right, you gotta have your hoes right. Like you gotta yeah, have, like petty, 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 bro. Yeah, Drake is a right. petty king. Put push it, push it, push it didn't seem to have an issue. Uh, like I said, Drake, Drake say I, I'm not gonna do this because it, it could get ugly. Like Drake decided not to. Oh, all right, so Cole did the same thing. Are we in agreement? I mean, you said you said what he started doing. Yeah. Thing that Drake, Drake, all, Drake also dropped multiple diss tracks and is still dissing them. He's but, still dissing. But, but 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 when the moment was in front of him, he bowed yeah. out. He didn't bow out respectfully. See, that's the difference. Cole bowed out respectfully. Drake I look at him more like. like Drake, like Drake. Drake was the one that was really like, oh, I don't want this. <laughs> not, not. I could do this, and it would. It was like, nah. Bro, well, you see, Pusher. You see, Pusher ain't talking to him no more. Drake just told that man, "You lucky I won in Fashion Week." <laughs> like, like, man, all right, man. Drake be talking to these boys crazy, and that's why I think J Cole knows a lot of people don't like Drake. Like, yeah, but. It's the same thing with Diddy. Like when somebody has that much impact, man. Like we could pull it, bro. They're not playing your song. If you play a future song, you'll never see Drake here. Like I think it's that type of situation. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe but that's what I'm saying. I, I think I think future is uh, unavoidable, bro. Okay. You're never not playing March Madness. All right, March okay. Madness. March Madness is getting played. All right, <laughs> <laughs> you know as well as I know. March Madness is getting played at every uh, at every function for the foreseeable f- for the it's been getting played for the last ten and probably get played for the next ten at every damn function. All right, like Drake could go on P Valley and diss you like he got the juice, bro. But all right, man, maybe I'm just a fan. Like, no, you definitely I, you're definitely uh, you're definitely a member. All right, bro, I'm a member of the game. <laughs> Definitely remember for sure. I, I listen to the bars. That's my favorite Drake. When he talking to these other rappers, so we gonna take it to the Vava to the Saint Cloud Hey, if you know, you know, baby. Like he be talking to him like, bro, y'all can't even do what I'm doing. I wasn't even gonna mention the plane. Yeah, that plane is crazy. That was crazy. That was crazy. That's my favorite Drake. That joke was crazy. I wasn't gonna mention the plane. <laughs> Like, let's go ahead and mention the plan. No. That's my favorite Drake. When he's talking to them crazy. Like, Drake undeniable, bro. Like, I ain't about to sit here and deny deny uh I, Drake is undeniable, but I'm telling you, <laughs> future, future man, Hendrix is undeniable as well. Bro, my man Drake said, really, they scared of the six. <laughs> All right, man. All right, bro. We go, we gonna see, we gonna see, man. I ain't future, seen nobody future, before future versus Toronto Drake yet. is the beat I really want. That's the one, I, that's the one I want to see. I ain't say nobody. Yeah. Knows That's how my boy Future. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I agree with you, Bryce, because I, I think the, the best part about the Drake Future beef is they're gonna put it in hits. Like, like that Future joint, man. I be forgetting that um that Kendrick be dissing them niggas on that because I just be rocking in that shit. That that song is just the vibe, bro. The thing is, he didn't even go that crazy like this. Really, he just said, you know, what I'm saying, yeah. fuck the big three. I'm the best. Like, you know, that's it. Yeah, it was really a Drake diss. Yeah. Nah, 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 nah. It wasn't really a Drake diss because the biggest bar was a direct response to what Kendrick, I mean, to what Cole said, bro. Yeah. Cole is the one that was like, who the nah, big bro. Is? No, my the man, biggest my bar. Man said, my man said, like for, for all the dogs getting buried, he took Drake's album and said, we're burying that shit, bro. That is a Drake diss. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It is, but the biggest bar, the biggest bar on that joint, Literally, no, it's the big three bar, bro. <laughs> it's Prince. That, that's the bar everybody's talking about, it's bro. Prince nah, the beat like drops. That. The beat drops to the whole fuck the that's big the three. Big, come on, bro. Let's not let's not debate a fact, dog. The biggest bar is the big three bar, and that's a direct response to what Cole said, bro. Hundred percent. But that's why I like Cole's this better because Kendrick had to take that big three line from the Drake and J Cole song, which is a bigger song, and flip it. 
You know what I'm saying? He had to steal from from Cole and try to flip it to make it relevant, which is why when Cole said if he wasn't dissing, we wouldn't even be discussing. So, it's, it's, yeah. and who knows? That's we might not hear from we might not hear from Kendrick for another two years. Cole Cole realized he was what Cole was like. Cole said some borderline shit where it's like, what you mean? And it come with extensions, like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah, what yeah, you yeah, mean? Yeah, nah, buddy? He, he, he you, overstepped a little bit. He did because he's not that kind of guy. Because he's yeah. talking, he probably listening to this joint back, and he's like, come in. Uh, with see, that's that's, like, where, nah, that's, that why think, that's why I think we get mistaken though. You know, saying what kind of guy we uh, we don't know these guys, bro. We don't know these guys. They I don't know what kind of guy guys. Cole really is, bro. I don't know. <laughs> oh, not that kind of guy. He not he not, not coming with bro. intentions, bro. He's coming with <laughs> a backpack and a laptop. And, you All know, right. All right. I mean, I'm, saying, bro, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not ready to say what kind of guy any of these people are, bro. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. But hey, bottom line is, man, it, it gave some excitement to the rap game. Um, and you know, I think rap needed it, and I think rap needs whatever it gets, right? So whatever happens, rap needs it. It's it's a it's a cycle. It's a cycle. And um, interested to see what comes out of it. Hopefully, uh, hopefully no no bodily harm to nobody that we that we know, you know, or nobody. Period. But especially the ones that we've all grown to to, to love and be familiar with. Uh, but hey, man, good show tonight, fellas. We went. Yeah, we went a little over tonight, that's for sure. Um, yeah. But hey, good shit tonight, fellas, as always, man. Y'all know how we end each and every show. Sports for the coach.